I'm your Space Coast correspondent, James Sparvero, at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, talking today about the human cost of the deepest budget cuts NASA is facing in more than 60 years. This news about a push to shed 300 workers here comes from Politico, which is reporting that nationwide, 2,100 senior-ranking NASA employees are set to lose their jobs as the Trump White House trims the federal workforce. We've seen for months that NASA has been offering early retirement, buyouts, and deferred resignations. Since administrations changed, the whole space industry has been waiting to see what direction NASA will be steered towards. When it comes to the possibility of shortening the Artemis moon program, I talked with space journalist Dr. Ken Kramer about what the worst case scenario could be for the Space Coast. You're going to have thousands of people laid off. That is going to hurt the local economy. That is going to hurt tourism, people who want to see these launches. Launches like Artemis II, which is being prepared right now inside the VAB. Job losses make you wonder just how important these workers are to the goal of flying astronauts around the moon in just another year and landing on the moon after that. When I got a chance to ask NASA about its uncertain future, here's how they answered as we stood right next to the giant Space Launch System booster. How do you do your best to stay focused on the task at hand and keep your team focused on the work you're doing right now? Well, that's a great question. I think the, the, way, the way that we do it is we just recognize just how incomparably complex this task is. I don't think anybody here has any time to think about anything else other than getting this vehicle processed, getting it rolled out to the pad, and flying the crew safely, frankly. If enacted by Congress, adjusted for inflation, this would be NASA's smallest budget since 1961, the same year that Alan Shepard became the first American in space. At NASA's Kennedy Space Center, I'm your Space Coast correspondent, James Sparvero, News 6.